I mean, it's in the bag. Hello, my wonderful friends. I hope that you have been having an equally wonderful holiday season. I know that I had a wonderful Christmas. Got some cool gifts, got some great new wool socks. Can never have too many socks. Then I got lots and lots of cookies. Don't say it. I am allowed to enjoy cookies without obvious jokes being made. And yeah, just had a great time. Just chilled, relaxed, took two days off. First two days off I've taken in like a m month or two or something, so it was great. Hope your holiday was great too. Oh, and I hope you enjoyed the Christmas roundup. I know I had a, a lot of fun uh, filming that one. But anyway, this one is real. This one's got real news in it, so let's get started. Recently, Miyamoto did a pretty great interview with the New Yorker and uh, Nintendo Life has pulled out, uh, you know, the the choicest little tidbits from the interview. Talks a little bit about like Super Nintendo World and uh, just how, you know, he's getting on in age and he basically uh, says that he's not super concerned about who's gonna replace him at Nintendo. Um, he's just kind of uh, just doing his own thing, just focusing on making good experiences and you know, they're trying to raise up the next generation of designers and all that stuff. So he, I guess he, he feels that the company uh, will eventually be in good hands when he, you know, the time comes for him to retire. I don't know when that'll be. He is uh, 68, um, easily old enough to retire. <laughs> Lots of people retire by 68, um, but obviously he still has uh, quite a lot of work left in him. So um, who knows? He also talks about, it's a really great interview. It really goes into a lot of, a lot of depth, a lot of really nice, like long, like personal answers from Miyamoto. Um, he talks about how uh, when his kids were kids, and you know, back in the, the really, you know, the pretty early days of Nintendo, his kids, they play, you know, they played a whole lot of video games and uh, sometimes they would like to play Sega games. And uh, it's just kind of a funny little thing. He talks about how um, whenever they enjoyed Sega games, that kind of inspired him to try harder, you know, cause back then it was Nintendo versus Sega. That was the whole entire thing. So I was like, well, I better just make better Nintendo games then, which I don't know, I just thought that was pretty cute. He mentions how <laughs> all of the game consoles in the house were technically his and he let them use them, which uh, I thought was just kind of funny. And then he goes on uh, to talk a, a whole lot about just how I don't know, like video games and how they can kind of tell personal stories and sort of uh, some of his own insight into how, uh, you know, different mediums can tell different emotional experiences. He likes to tell experiences that are not like super deep and heavy um, because it's interactive. He feels that those experiences are better left for uh, uh, passive mediums, you know, like books and movies. I, uh, I mean, obviously, I don't, I don't really agree with him there. Uh, obviously, you know, plenty of video games can dig into that stuff, but I get from his perspective and the kinds of experiences he wants to make, he's not interested in that. Although he does say how he likes the idea of a person um, being aware of the motives of the enemies that you kill, even, even in Mario games. He says he, he has thought a lot about how even the monsters in a video game, they, they have motives and uh, reasons for being the way that they are. And I think that's really funny because um, he's, I mean, this is kind of a really big discussion, um, but basically like a lot of people get on his case uh, for not liking stories. And uh, that's kind of true. He doesn't like deep stories in the way that he just mentioned. He thinks because it's interactive and he just is not the kind of thing he wants to do. Um, but a lot of people don't know that he actually really does like story on a, um, a more broad kind of shallow level. Like even back like in the early days of Nintendo, he's the one who came up with the whole scenario of like, you know, the princess getting kidnapped and you gotta like the fact that there's a villain and there's some sort of uh, motivation to him that's what story is so even really early on he was like i'm bringing stories to games because back then so many games were so shallow they didn't even have that basic setup that story setup so to him that was really uh important to him for it to have a story even if that means just a basic setup and now fast forward to today and we're like miyamoto hates stories so i don't know i just think it's kind of it's an interesting conversation it's an interesting topic well, that was all the interesting stuff uh, from the interview. Uh, moving on, data miners have been digging around in the Super Nintendo World uh, mobile app. Of course, it's the app that works uh, with the park, you know, connects with your wristband and lets you do all the games and stuff, as we saw in the recent uh, Nintendo Direct. On the subject, um, data miners have apparently found Donkey Kong stickers in the app, like unused Donkey Kong stuff. This could mean anything. This could be uh, in, uh, just a completely unused asset that will never be used, was once uh, considered, you know, they were considering using it. Um, or as I said before, I think um, there have been plenty of like rumors and like, you know, quote unquote leaked 
uh, maps of like plans of the park. It seems that this this uh, this one in Japan might be kind of on the smaller side because they don't have a lot of room there, but I think the ones coming to other territories might actually have a lot more planned in the way of other non-Mario content. And uh, all that might not be true, but if it is true, then there's uh, plenty chance that this Donkey Kong stuff will end up being used in a Donkey Kong part of Super Nintendo World, you know, the one in Orlando or something. Um, but, uh, I don't know, we really just gotta wait and see on that one. I can certainly keep my fingers crossed. I mean, it's Donkey Kong. Like, if you're gonna go a you know, Mario, he's Nintendo. But if you're gonna go a number two, it's Donkey Kong. Mario came from Donkey Kong. Everybody knows Donkey Kong. Almost just as iconic as Mario. Um, so yeah, some sort of representation only makes sense. Then, speaking of Super Nintendo World, uh, a lot of new images have come out, uh, just like a map of the park and and uh, pictures of the food and a lot more of the items in the gift shop and just all sorts of stuff, some very, very beautiful pictures. Uh, the map definitely makes it seem a lot smaller, you know? Like, just when I remember him walking around, you know, Miyamoto walking around in the direct and then, like, looking at the map, it's like, oh yeah, that's not, a, uh, it's not super huge. Um, it does still look very cool though, but definitely not very big. But yeah, check out those images if you haven't yet. So, Did You Know Gaming has done what I would consider a, uh, a superb, a superb bit of, uh, investigation. They've dug through all of the different Mario Party games, and they've come to the conclusion that there is no way that you can affect dice rolls. You know, everybody, you know, oh, if you hit it at the right time, you know, when it's flashing the right number, it might affect something, but apparently it is pretty much always either completely random, generated on the spot, uh, or predetermined. So, uh, I don't know. I thought that was pretty interesting. <laughs> I mean, it makes it easy. I mean, it's a little bit fun, like, trying to time it, but I mean, you know, now whenever you play any Mario Party game, you just, just hit the button right away, because it really doesn't matter, apparently. As reported by Nintendo Life, of course, GameIndustry.biz uh, has put together a really great little, like, uh, just kind of a breakdown of, like, stats and stuff on video games and consoles and what sold and and uh, just a bunch of, bunch of different stuff uh, for the UK. And there's a lot of interesting information there. Uh, and it seems that Switch owners, uh, out of the, you know, out of the three major consoles or three, you know, major platforms or whatever, Switch owners are the most likely to own a rival console. Um, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, you know, most people who have an Xbox are less likely to have a PlayStation, but then like having a Switch, yeah, that makes sense, you know, because it's not really a direct, direct rival. They're rivals in ways, but it also offers a different experience. So yeah, it makes sense that a lot of people that have the Switch also have at least one of, you know, a different console. Nintendo of America has opened up 18 internship positions. These cover a pretty wide breadth of just game stuff, <laughs> game industry stuff. Uh, most of the positions are in uh, Redmond, Washington, the Nintendo of America headquarters. So if you live around there and you're getting your degree, here you go, there are 18 positions Open it up at Nintendo, pretty cool. Nordisk Games, not to be confused with Nordic Games, has uh, bought 40% of Mercury Steam. Uh, Mercury Steam is the developer that made Samus Returns, and uh, it's actually really interesting. I had never heard of this company before, um, but it seems they very deliberately uh, want to purchase under 50% of uh, various companies. They have a lot of, uh, you know, a, a good handful of uh, different developers under the belt now. But it seems they're really interested in keeping them pretty independent, keeping the companies... Uh, you know, more or less in control of their own destinies, which I think is pretty cool. They just, you know, hey, we want a stake in your company, but we don't want to control your company. We just think you guys are doing a great job and we want you under our banner. So, I don't know, there you go. And of course, I don't know, um, you know, we, we've all got our fingers crossed that Mercury Steam, well, I do, a, a fair amount of people, fingers crossed that Mercury Steam is working on some other Metroid project. Um, nobody knows if they are or not, and if they are, whether or not this affects that, probably not, just based on what we're seeing here, it seems they'd be able to continue. Um, so hopefully they are. <laughs> to take this opportunity to say, I sure hope Mercury Steam is making another Metroid game. So apparently there is a video game museum called the National Video Game Museum in Frisco, Texas. And it seems that they uh, they don't wanna just keep everything behind glass. Uh, they like uh, interactive, I mean, you know, video games, interactive medium, they want interactive, uh, interactive exhibits. And it seems that they are looking to preserve Animal Crossing islands that were made during the pandemic. 
I guess they just think that's an interesting, I mean, it is, it's an interesting piece of video game history. And so apparently people are able to uh, submit their islands to kind of just be preserved in this little this little chunk of history. That time, everyone had to stay home and a bunch of them played Animal Crossing, which is um, a really interesting idea that I cannot say I had considered. Pokemon Company recently outlined their plans for the new year and for January for a Pokemon Go. Uh, I can't even see any like specific highlights. It's just a massive, <laughs> just a massive list of things that will be happening in various events and costumes and doodads. If you play Pokemon Go, check out the list if you haven't already, which you probably have. So let's move on. So the uh, Pokemon TCG, it seems that the uh, the Cinderace card in the base set of Pokemon Sword and Shield was printed with an error. Its retreat cost is supposed to be two colorless energy, but they printed it as one. And so now they are going to be updating them moving forward. And now I am wondering if I have one of those. I don't know, I don't know how many got printed. Probably a lot. It's probably not going to be worth anything. But of course, everybody who has one is like, oh, I wonder. I mean, you know, it's a Cinderace, so it was in, you know, a bunch of theme decks and stuff. And and, and uh, Pokemon Company, they sent me some cards, and I'm just like, I wonder. I wonder if I've got one. We'll see. Maybe I'll be up. Maybe it'll spike up in value, and I'll be able to sell it for a whole five dollars or something. Getting pizza tonight. Some new uh, extra squishy, wishy, huggable, puffy. Plushy, wishy Pokemon plushies are, are now available to buy in North America. These things do look very, very squishy, wishy, and extra huggy huggable. If huggable squishiness is uh, your thing, check them out. Final piece of Pokemon news Joe Merrick of uh, Cerebi, which is a really big Pokemon fan site, uh, apparently it is a tradition for him to put together a gigantic, gigantic Pokemon-related crossword puzzle this time of year. I did not know this, um, but the new one is out and it's gargantuan, just absolutely huge. Apparently it's just like a super hardcore Pokemon knowledge crossword puzzle. So if you fancy yourself a, a hardcore Pokemon fan, maybe if you're one of the people who uh, applied for that, <laughs> that Tencent position I talked about, one or two weeks ago. Uh, maybe you'll be perfect here. You can just put this in the resume. You beat the crossword puzzle and you're like, I did this in an hour and you send it to Tencent and that's your, <laughs> that's your application. It seems that somebody had a busted Wii U and uh, when they sent it into Nintendo, Nintendo fixed it up and extracted a missing wedding ring from it that had been apparently stuffed in there by this person's child. And uh, Nintendo was kind enough to return it with the Wii U. So that's kind of funny. Anything anything that even mildly catches my attention goes in the roundup. That's in the roundup. Wedding ring, Wii U story, done. We did it. Fun. It was fun. It's a good time. And finally, in Reggie fils podcast, uh, he went over a story about how when he was still working uh, with Nintendo, Kanye West attended an E3 and was hanging out in the Nintendo booth, apparently talking to Shigeru Miyamoto. And he started talking to all the Nintendo folks about doing something together. And so Reggie had to be the one to go and like talk to him and be like, nah, you don't want to work with Nintendo. That's ah, too hard. We're such perfectionists. And he's like, no, I super duper want to. Um, and he, he did have to decline. It, it, we don't know what it would have been. We don't know what kind of thing, if it would have been a game. Maybe he had just like a cool idea for the next Pokemon game or something. I don't really know what it was. Um, and I'm try, trying not to throw out too much shade on this channel, but I do think that Nintendo uh, did the right thing. <laughs> did the right thing. Uh, he's uh, He doesn't seem to be the easiest person to work with, and I can't get behind some of the uh, decisions he's made and actions he has taken as a professional, even though I am intensely curious to know what he had in mind uh, apparently we will never know because Nintendo did have to decline and it was Reggie himself. <laughs> Reggie fils himself had to say to Kanye West's face, sorry man, we don't really want to work with you right now. And with that, this edition of the Nintendo News Roundup is done and dusted, as Kane would say. Must be a, must be a Britishism, I suppose. <laughs> he also says H instead of H. I did not know that was a thing. I didn't know that was a thing at all until until I talked to Kane. Interesting. It's amazing the 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 rich, colorful tapestry that makes up humanity. <laughs>
But yeah, that's it. And that's that's the year. We're wrapping a year right now. We're doing it. Hey, everybody. We're wrapping up a year. Well, it wasn't a solid year. Uh, what did I start these in? Like April or something? But whatever, it's the end of the year, the end of a year of news roundups. Oh, we're here, we're at the end, it feels great. Thank you so much to anybody who has stuck around and who has been enjoying these news roundups. Are you still enjoying these news roundups? Do you want me to keep doing them in the new year? If so, please go down to the comments and let me know so I can just stroke my ego and praise myself and <laughs> Pat myself on the back. Go Arlo, these roundups are great. Even though we should be praising Kane and Yoshiller for making these roundups because they're done so well and so professionally and it's great. And I just read the stories and I send them to those guys and they do them and they do a wonderful job. Give it up for them, forget the other thing. Well, no, you can tell me if you like them and you want me to keep doing them. But then on top of that, more importantly, give a shout out to Yoshiller and Kane down there I want every single top comment, every top comment, with all the upvotes and everything, I want every single one to be only talking about how awesome Kane and Yoshiller are. So go do that. Have a great year. Happy New Year. Have a good day. I love you. Goodbye.